Anyway, here's the graph that he didn't make until 1929. And uh, we call it a Hubble diagram. And the vertical axis is the velocity measured by Slipher in the first instance, but then by Humble and Hummison. Uh, and horizontally, the distance, which Hubble inferred from the brightness of variable stars and then from other techniques uh, on the horizontal axis. We call this a Hubble diagram. He called it figure one. <laughs> And you can see something here. You can see that as you look at more and more distant galaxies farther out along the horizontal axis, that they have bigger velocities. And the way this plot is made, the bigger velocities are the ones moving away from you. So you'll notice there are just a couple of galaxies moving toward us. M31, the Andromeda galaxy, is one of those. Check your homeowner's insurance. But uh, <laughs> most of the galaxies are moving away from us away from you. This may lead you to the kind of illusion that many of my students, and I believe all members, of, at least the tenured members of the faculty at my institution have, which is that they personally are at the center of the universe. <laughs> but if there's, any, if there's any lesson from the history of science, and I'm not sure that there is, but if there's any lesson from the history of science, it's that Thinking that we're at the center has been a bad bet for 400 years. Is the Earth at the center of the solar system? No, probably not. Is the sun at the center of our Milky Way galaxy? No, the sun is not at the middle of the Milky Way. It's out in some spiral arm far from the center. It seems like it would be almost a willful kind of misunderstanding for us to say, oh yeah, that's all true, but our galaxy is somehow at the center of the universe. So the question is, how do you reconcile these two things that you see expansion away from us and the thought that we're not at the center of things? Well.